Hello everyone, my name is Riju and I'm going to show you how you can create a SQL Server database in Azure and then connect it from your local machine. So let me go ahead and say create a resource from the Azure portal and once I say that I get to see a list of things which I can create and then if I select SQL database this would show me the list of options available and then I can go and say create. The SQL database is a platform as a service which means the server and patching and update and upgrade everything will be managed by uh, Microsoft. You will just be hosting your data over there. So you can either create a new resource group on or pick up a resource group existing resource group you already have and it asks you to provide a database so let's say demo db and then it's asked you to select a server from the existing servers imagine that you are doing it for the first time so you will hit create new and create a server so if you need a server you need to be having a server name which is uniquely available across all azure subscription because the name itself is part of a dns so whatever name you provide will be followed by dot database dot windows dot net so let me see our demo svr wg if i just provide this and it needs to identify that it is uniquely available and then nobody is using that now here i need to provide the username and password so i provide the username that's the server admin username and the password and once it matches the condition like at least eight characters and all this stuff like minimum one capital letter small letter number and special character i need to provide the same one so let me put that and I can select a location where I want to create this um, server to. So you can see all the locations are available grouped by the uh, continent. So if I, let's say in, in, in Asia Pacific, so I see all the Asia Pacific specific, specific uh, look regions in my list and I hit OK. It's not going to create the server now, but it will have all the entry for the new server under which my database which is demo db will be created so i can create many more databases within the same server just like on premises a sql offers you elastic pool which means that you have got much more capability and then it's spread across and it's good for unpredictable kind of load or you can select a specific size of a machine under which your sql will be de deployed so i'm not going into that optional you can choose a network when you put a network and then put the SQL server behind that network. That means only um, resources within that network will be able to access the SQL server. Otherwise, if you don't put a network, then it's publicly accessible. So I'll put public endpoint. And then you can also have a private endpoint, right? So I just leave them here and then I say additional settings and you can choose all those collation you want to use a sample database so it will basically be preloading with some data etc um, etc et so you can just say that enable data security and all additional stuff which are basically optional but good to really look forward to if you are creating and deploying a production workload right now we are just having it for our demo purpose now once this everything looks fine i can hit create and it'll start the creation process before it starts the creation process it will validate whether everything is done so one of the validations is that the server name i have provided uh, i might be uh, might have decided the server name in the morning but i created the sql server in the evening and in the meantime the server name is already taken by someone else and if that is the case the validation will fail right so those are the kind of 
things which happens in during the validation process so while it validates let us also um, install a tool which will connect the sql server um, in our local machine so this is nothing but sql server management studio and we commonly call it as ssms uh, ssms stands for sql server management studio so i will just type the ssms and then select the page where the ssms documentation is available which will guide me to the download link of the ssms uh, and then i can just click on the link and it will start downloading this is a 535 mb download a huge size and um, it just starts downloading while it is downloading let me just switch to the other tab and see how much so you can see the server is created now it is the database which is getting um, created within that server so which will be done in a moment time while it is getting done i am also downloading this uh, management studio and once this management studio is kind of downloaded i will install the management studio so that i can connect to the sql server right so we will start both of them parallelly now let me just once this windows defender is okay with the downloaded file it will start the installation wizard you can connect with any tool which can connect to a sql server database uh, you can also connect using visual studio and you can even use portal like base tools if there are any management tools if you're using so it's not only restricted to sql server management studio but this is one of the most popular tools available for sql developers who are designing the sql database right and you can see this this is a live progress happening here and uh, it says deployment is under progress and then let me just see that and then i start installation of the sql server management studio this is release 18.5.1 so at times it might so happen that you are in the you are using older version so it will prompt you to download the newer version and then update it and then you can continue with the older version or the newer version based on the requirement now you can see at the back there was some notification which popped and you can see the whatever notification you might have missed uh, will be all be available here so this is what it says that deployment is successful so i can go to this um, page and then it takes me directly to the database of um, of the sql server i have created just now now it gives me a couple of information for example it gives me a connection string right so if you just copy the connection string it shows you the connection string it also has a server name so we'll only use the server name and then connect to that um, using our SQL management studio. So while this is getting um, down installed, I will have to first of all uh, do few stuff. One of the most important thing of any SQL server connectivity by default, it is not allowed to connect um, any resources from outside. And to do that, what you need is that you need to define a firewall rule. So you go to the database or the server level and then define a firewall rule. You can see that um, you have got a client IP address, this, which is basically this machine's IP address. So this is by default taken, but if you, let's say, are connecting from another region, so you have to keep adding the, the IP address or the range of the IP addresses. So let, let me do something which you should not do in the production is that open up all the IP addresses. So I'll say all, and then I say, 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 dot, and then I said 255. You should not be doing that. This is a big no no, but just for the demo purpose, we are making everything sort of like available. There's an additional dot, so let me just say save, and it's gonna save this uh, firewall rules. Once this firewall rule is kind of set, I should be able to then connect using this SQL Management Studio. Now this is successfully installed, so let me just say close and then start 
the SQL Management Studio. Remember that at the beginning, what I did, I copied the server name. So this is the server name. So what this will do now, once this is loaded, the SQL Management Studio, I will provide the server name and the username and password I have created in the beginning. Now once you connect using the SQL Management Studio, what you need to also do uh, at the beginning is that you need to also um, change or create a new username and password for your database and give a specific role they're allowed to, um, to oper operate on, not the super admin because super admin is the username and password for your database server. Remember that is having access to all the databases you are creating within. So the manage, after the management studio loads in your screen, what you should be doing is that you should be getting a prompt to connect to the SQL server. Let me just provide the, the name and then you will be selecting SQL authentication because that's how we are connecting and provide the, the database username and password to begin with. And then if I just hit enter, this will take me to inside that um, let me just set it up over here so that this is kind of visible and once this is kind of loaded you can see that I have my databases and I have my database created I have no tables so I can literally go ahead and say create a new table right let's say I want to create a new table and then I say I create a new table and I just say ID that's my identity column and then let's say employee name that's the name of the employee and I say varchar 50 one of the things I need to make sure that it is having a clustered index so let me set it a primary key and also set the, the auto identity field that is identity true and then you can see it automatically picks up the command because it is integer now if I say and I'll say employee table and that's just created and if you just go ahead and refresh the list you will get to see the employee table created and that's all about how easy it is to create a SQL server and a database and connect from a local machine through your SQL server management studio or any other tool just wanted to remind you that um, this will thank you very much and have a wonderful day